This lesson explains step by step the construction and deployment of a simple servlet. First, let's take a look at the source code of the servlet itself. The first import statement is for the I.O. object that's used to write the output. The other import statements include the classes that are necessary in the creation of a servlet. These three import statements are fairly standard for all servlets. You'll see others too, but you'll almost always see these three. A servlet always extends the HTTP servlet class. This class has a collection of methods that don't do anything, but if you need your servlet to do something, you will need to override one or more of these methods to get that done. This example overrides the doGet method. This method is the one that's called when you click on a link in a browser, and that's usually what you want to do. Now, notice the two arguments to the method. These same two arguments come in for almost all of the methods that you're going to be overriding. The request object is the incoming information. You get the parameters and stuff from inside there. The other argument is the response object. You use the methods and objects that you find in that one to generate a response to the requester. For example, you write the HTML page back to the requester using the out object supplied by the response object. And the response object also has methods that are used to format standard HTML stuff and write it to the output. This example specifies the content type, the format of the output. The rest of the code here in the doGet method are all out statements. They write the body of the HTML page. This example is very simple. It just puts the word howdy in bold letters at the top and center of the page. Now as we go from lesson to lesson, I'm going to be adding more servlets to this same directory, so I set up a batch file that will compile them. Nothing special about this. I just erase all the class files and start from scratch every time. You could make this fancier if you wished. The Java tool of choice is Ant. It's sort of like make, if you know how that works, but it uses an XML configuration file to determine what should be compiled and where things should go. When you download a J2EE, you also got some sample applications and some ant files for compiling the things. I don't use it here because explaining servlets is enough for right now. Notice that the compile command is normal except for the setting of the class path option to point to the J2EE class library. If you prefer, you could set the class path environment variable and skip it here. The program is compiled this way. The next step is to build a WAR file that contains the servlet. You do that by creating the web inf directory with a classes subdirectory and a web.xml file. The classes subdirectory is for holding the class files of the servlets. The web xml file needs to hold a couple of entries for each servlet. This particular XML file contains the settings for one servlet. You can use any name you like for the servlet. I like to use the same name as the class file, that way I don't lose track of myself. The name is the one that you will find that you need to use on the URL to address that servlet. I wrote a script that builds the war file for me. It erases any old war files that are left over from earlier and copies the classes into the classes subdirectory of the web inf directory. Then it uses the jar command to make a war file named servlets.war. The only thing fed into the war file is this directory. You may recall that jar was used to create the war file for the JSP code, but the source code of the Java server pages was included as separate items in the list. 
With servlets, there is no source code, so everything just goes into the web INF directory. You can create the WAR file this way. All you have to do now is deploy the WAR file and address the servlet from the browser. Different servers have different ways of doing the deployment. The server that comes with J2EE has its own administration system that you can use to deploy WAR files directly from your web browser. You do that like this. You select Web Applications, then select Deploy. From this uh, pop-up window, you choose the WAR file, then you go to the Next, and you can see it deployed. And you can run the servlet by addressing it in the URL. And that's all there is to it.